Hey everybody, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is all about how to make your own Windows 11 installer that bypasses things like TPM sensor check, uh, minimum RAM requirement check, uh, minimum storage check, and a whole bunch of other stuff. What we are basically going to do is take a Windows 10 ISO, modify it with a tool like Ultra ISO, and then flash that modified Windows 10 ISO to a flash drive to then put in a computer that would not otherwise allow Windows 11 to install. I run Windows 11 on uh, almost every PC in my house uh, using this exact ISO. Uh, some of my computers have Ghost Spectre, but every computer that doesn't have Ghost Spectre in my house is running this uh, created ISO. I also use these at work when we generally have to put Windows on something. So all in all, even Windows 11 then also runs a lot better than Windows 10 ever did, at least in my experience. So without further ado, you first need Windows 11's ISO, Windows 10's ISO. So you can find the Windows 11 ISO from Microsoft's website. You simply just follow the prompts here for getting the ISO, click your language, confirm, 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 it downloads. From there, you go to the Windows 10 website page and you have to do some trickery. So if you are on a regular Windows computer for some reason, or in any form of a desktop browser, and you go to this web page, you get met with out the ability to download the ISO. I don't understand this methodology. It doesn't really seem to make any sense to me. It is so slow to load. I don't understand. Oh, my Lanta. I'm not even on my VPN right now. There's nothing slowing my internet down. This is just Microsoft's website. You would think it would be one of the best websites in the world for loading stuff, but it's one of the slowest. I'll come back when this freaking page loads. I should have waited about eight more seconds. Anyway, normally you'll see this page and, oh, there's no option to download the ISO. On Firefox and Chrome, you get the ability to emulate a mobile device. So hit F12 on your keyboard with the frickin' browser selected. And at least on Firefox, it's over here. It's the responsive design mode. You can then emulate mobile devices uh, and things like that. I like doing a Chrome OS uh, laptop. You simply select this and then refresh the web page and it will automatically take you to a new web page where it has the ISO download link for Windows 10. It's really dumb that they make you jump through hoops. Looks like there's a lot of errors loading Microsoft's web page and that's why this page is so slow. But It'll basically take you to this page where you can download it, and it looks exactly the same as this. It loaded the title. Looks exactly the same as this. Uh, you download the ISO and then put both ISOs in the same folder. So as you can see, I have the Windows ISOs right here. I'm deleting that one. It's not true. And then the other thing you need is something like Yumi Booter, which will create a bootable USB device. You could also use Rufus and kind of expedite this process, but I like knowing how things work, so I like to figure them out on my own. But as you can see, select your multi-edition, click confirm, use your language, confirm, etc., etc. It's very easy, follow the prompts, it'll give you the ISO download. From there, you need something like Ultra ISO and you need Yumi for creating a bootable flash drive. With Ultra ISO, this is wrong, Open Ultra ISO, very easy to find a premium version. That's cracked, don't worry about it. You want to open the install uh, installer ISO for Windows 11. Oopsie. There's the Windows 11 ISO, open in here. You go to sources and then you can just, on your keyboard, hit IN twice. And you'll see install.esd right here. You want to extract this from the ISO and put it somewhere. I've already done it, it's five gigs. I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch a progress bar. From there, you want to open the Windows 10 ISO. The easiest way to do this on Windows 10 is INS, there you go. We delete the install ESD, and then we take the one from Windows 11 and just drag and drop it in here. Oops, and as you will see, 
it's right here, the Windows 11 one. And you can tell because the dates are different. So now what you want to do is save as, and we're going to call it win 11 custom ISO. And it, it basically creates the ISO for you. That's going to bypass the TPMS sensor or the TPM sensor, the RAM detection and all that. And will basically allow you to put Windows 11 on any system you want. I have even put this on MacBooks. Like no joke, my I have uh, two A1446s that are early 2015 model MacBooks that are running Windows 11 using this method to create the ISO. I also have uh, two different fourth gen Intel computers in my house that are running Windows 11 that otherwise could not get Windows 11. And a lot of other computers like uh, Microsoft Surface, uh, I have a couple Microsoft Surfaces running 11. I have a couple uh, weird laptops, like one's called a Zydu laptop, the Zydu Philpad. This is what I put on there before discovering Ghost Spectre. So anyway, I'm going to pause this and not ramble so you don't have to watch a progress bar. And I'll come back when this is done. All right, it saved the ISO. It's actually the right file size this time, which the last video it wasn't when I tried to record this. Now we're going to make the bootable USB. So if you have anything on the USB you select, make sure it's backed up if it's important. Open up Yumi. Click I agree. Find your USB. Make sure it is the exact USB you are using. I'm using this 32 gig SanDisk. You want to click prepare device, which means it will basically format it, erasing everything off the USB, and then it will allow you to continue creating the bootable ISO. So you want to quadruple check that you pick the right thing before you do this, because if you pick the wrong drive, you are obviously going to erase some very important things. So I know it's drive I from looking right here, USB drive I. I, yes, it's going to erase that USB real quick, format it, install the bootloader files that it needs for the XFAT Windows uh, ISO install, and give it a minute, it'll show back up. Not very difficult, honestly. It's just sitting here waiting a second for it to do its thing. Basically, this will get up to 100 and you're done. But we are currently, oh, it's quick. I mean, it would be quicker if this was a USB 3. <laughs> Continue from step two. Now we need to select the Ventoy. We need to select our installation ISO, which you want to go all the way down and just click Windows 11 installer. You want to go show all ISOs, and you want to go to wherever your ISO is. So in this case, it's this custom ISO right here. Click open, and then click create. This is going to put the ISO on the new created um, USB. It does basically just copy and paste it over, not going to lie. This is going to take a very long time. This is 5.8 gigs and it's moving it at less than a megabyte per second because this USB is slow. <laughs> I should have picked a better USB or at least put it in a 3.0 port since it's a 3.0 USB, but I put it in a front port because I'm lazy. Now I have to wait longer. So yeah, uh, I'll just explain what you have to do from here. Um, once it is done creating the USB, it's different for every computer or at least every brand computer. What you need to do is go into or turn off the computer, plug the USB in, and then figure out what your boot menu key is. So for example, best way to do this honestly is just Google it. So let's say Lenovo boot key menu. It'll tell you it's F12 or FN F12. You will then be able to boot the USB instead of the hard drive that's inside and you can go through the installer. Let's say it's a Dell. Dell computers are a little hit or miss, but usually F2 or F12, say it's an Asus, 
usually escape or F8. It's in. Does LG make computers anymore? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> HP, that's the other popular brand. Escape F9 or Escape F10 or F1. That's what I mean by it can be a slew of different keys. It's ridiculous. If you have something that's like a custom PC build, let's say it's an MSI board. Boot menu key. At that point, it's going to be a little bit different, but generally it's F11. Let's say it's a, a gigabyte. Probably delete, usually. If it's, uh, what's the other one? Well, Asus makes motherboards. Escape or F8. So you have a whole bunch of options. It's best to just Google it first. If you get an issue with Secure Boot, you have to go into your BIOS and disable Secure Boot. Then you won't have to worry about, you know, running into issues while installing this to your computer. Sometimes with Windows installers, you also run into issues with drivers for M.2 drives. And you can't install Windows because for some odd reason it doesn't recognize your M.2. At that point, that's when I go and I recommend Ghost Spectre. Or check and see if you were running like a RAID setup in the computer with the BIOS. That's when it starts to get a little bit more complicated and you might want to hit up a techie friend to actually help you out with this further. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. You can see this is going to take a freaking fat while. Yeah, uh, but I need this ISO, so I figured I'd make a video on it anyway. If you join my Discord and you don't want to sit and wait for this, uh, go in my description. There is a link tree link. It is an outdated ISO, but you can just go to this Google Drive link and it will be a uh, Windows 11 installer on Windows 10. You just go through Windows Update at that point and you're good to go. But I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.